Good morning. I'm Pastor Mark McDaniel. I am with the Evangelical United Church of Christ in Tell City, Indiana, and I am here with your weekly devotion. Our devotion title today is Moving Past Our Past, and it was written by Sadie Robertson Huff. Our focus verse is from the uh, book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And here's Sadie's story. I think you'll agree when I say we all have a past. What are the things in your past that you're not proud of? For me, plenty of things come to mind and I don't think I'm alone in that. Often what keeps us from following God is who we used to be or the things we used to do. I remember the story of a girl I met a while back. She was beautiful and sweet, and she had a past. One mistake she made in high school stuck with her for years. It was made public and ultimately prevented her from being accepted into any sorority at her college. All I could think about was how sad that had to be. She didn't have the opportunity to continue on to her future in something she would have loved to do, all because of something she did that wasn't a representation of who she is. It felt so unfair. A lot of times we feel the way my friend felt, like our past has disqualified us and is preventing us from moving forward. But the power of the gospel is that we have hope in the newness of life. And there is a resurrection story for us, just as our key verse says. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. How do we step into our life as a new creation when everyone knows us for who we were? There are two steps I've taken in my life when it comes to moving past my past. Number one, we must know who we are and what God's word says about us. If we are not rooted in his truth, we will listen to any voice that pops into our head. However, if we are truly anchored in the reality of who God says we are, when those voices come to attack, we will stop them in their tracks as we remind ourselves who and whose we are. Number two, we must fully commit our lives to Jesus. We can't fully be who we're meant to become if we're still living our old lives. For example, it would be very confusing if Paul, who wrote many New Testament books in the Bible, had continued to murder Christians after he became one himself. The powerful thing about his story is that he committed. He didn't turn back. Plenty of people in the Bible had to press past their pasts to step into God's calling for their lives, like Abraham, Moses, Joseph, Rahab, and we can do the same. What's crazy to think about is that if these people in Scripture hadn't pressed past their old lives, our lives would be drastically different. Many of our favorite Bible verses were written by Paul. We are impacted as Christians by people who have pressed past their pasts. And the same is true for our lives. What people am I going to reach when I finally get past who I used to be and step into who God has called me to be? Amazing impact lies on the other side of getting past our pasts. Live the life he has called you to. Don't let your past hold you back. This can sound easy, but it can also be a very long journey. However, today you can start that journey with your thoughts. What is a word you've been 
declaring over your past? Is it failure, lost, abused, dirty, sinful, weak, jealous? If your past still brings you shame, I want you to encourage I want to encourage you to change whatever your word is to redeemed. That's who you are in Christ, made new and washed clean. The only way we'll see the world change is if we truly change by the power of the gospel. And listen to this verse from Isaiah for deeper study. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And for your reflection, what truths from God's word can you take hold of today to help you move on from your past? And how can you begin to fully commit your life to Jesus today instead of living in your old identity? Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you so much for the power of the gospel. We thank you that we don't have to live tangled by our old sin and we can live redeemed by your blood. God, we thank you for making us new. We pray that when we feel stuck in old sin, you will break the chains. We pray that we will boldly preach the gospel, but above all else, live the gospel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I thank you for joining me today. I will be back again next Wednesday at 11 o'clock a.m. with another devotional. A reminder that we do have worship this Sunday at 10 o'clock a.m. Uh, Central Time at the corner of 10th Street and Jefferson, the Evangelical United Church of Christ. We do have a special treat this Sunday. We have um, a guest organist uh, coming to us from Louisville, and he will be playing several uh, pieces, a uh, prelude, postlude, uh, a piece of special music, as well as accompanying us on our hymns. So we hope that you are able to join us this Sunday at 10 o'clock for worship. Until we meet again, may God richly bless you.